Hello chess friends, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and I have seen gambits and I have seen gambits. <laughs> well, Shahriyar Mamidyarov has just played a very very interesting gambit in Tata Steel Tournament of 2022 and we have to be ready for it. The gambit is d4, knight f6, c4, e6, and here we go, guys. g4, shocking move. No wonder Mamidyarov is known for his unbelievable aggressive spirit. He loves these g4 moves. We can probably give it a name, the shock gambit, and it's getting more and more popular. I already see grandmasters play like this as white. Yet, guys, it does violate very basic principles of chess development. You know, why do we have to take this pawn? We don't. Yes, we could take the pawn and the engines show that this is a playable move, but to my mind, this is exactly what white wants. We are wasting an entire tempo. Okay, entire tempo on development. Now white has many moves, including the e4 push, getting full control over the center, hitting our knight, why do we do this? I don't like that. Instead, I like Yesipenko's answer. The young Russian simply plays d5. Okay, he actually played pretty decent for a while, and yet he made one inaccuracy and he couldn't really punish this gambit. So, what are we playing? We're playing Queen's Gambit position, Queen's Gambit declined. We can also play our Bogo idea, of course, Bishop b4 check, but you're gonna see that he did play this move later. So nothing wrong with bishop b4 check, but I do like d5. So the question is back in white's sort of court. Like, what do you do if you take on d5? Black gets a very good version, right? With e takes d, now the g-pawn is hit. And it's unclear exactly what white's trying to achieve with this g-pawn. Obviously, g5 simply met by knight, G, knight e4, and white has too many weaknesses. The g-pawn is under attack, our check is still uh, in the air, I simply don't see the reason for white playing this position. So Mamidyarov actually played g5 rather quickly here. Okay, so he, he's hitting the knight, Isipenko played logical knight e4. Now, of course, if f3 we have this check, right, just like the bogo, except much better version because no matter how he blocks, this g-pawn is getting attacked. For instance, knight d2, right? We can simply play queen takes g5, f takes e, and oopsies, mate on the board. <laughs> Seven move checkmate. This is one possible line. And of course, bishop d2 does not fare better. After bishop d2, we can do exactly the same checkmate. Queen takes g5, exclam. Okay, white can take either the knight or the bishop queen h4 will be made. So this is very simple idea. Of course, f3 is bad move. So he plays bishop g2, trying to create the little escape square for the king. Check, king f1, and here we come to the very important novelty that I'm about to share with you. Now, Yesipenko plays a move that I don't like. It's not a bad move, he plays bishop e7, and the point being is that he's so f3, right? And he realized, well, if knight takes, he's going to drop the piece. Knight has no squares. So he wanted to have this retreat square, and he didn't want that bishop to be let loose on b4. So this is a very safe move, and of course, black is still obviously totally fine. Yet this is not how you punish gambits. You punish gambits with active play, not wasting any tempi. Castles, exclam is my novelty. So you may wonder, okay, what if he plays f3? Now, if knight d6, which is a really bad move, after a3 bishop here, we're gonna lose a piece. b4, here, here, with no compensation, block is done. However, we also don't want to take the pawn on g5, as I showed to you, because of h4. So this looks like we are busted. Well, active chess is more important, guys it's okay to sacrifice material for activity. 
unbelievable move f5 x clan this is the ticket to the advantage this position is already really bad for white and i'm just going to share with you what could happen well first of all taken here is no good right he's only ways to block but then we can get our piece back with dividends we can take it now we can take it a couple of moves later this is not good so what was he afraid of after f5 on passant no big deal right he can take with the knight queen or rook i mean this position is just completely fine so i think he was afraid of this move a3 and now once the bishop leaves the diagonal uh the a5 e1 diagonal that is king can go there so probably he did not like this position pawn takes pawn takes king e1 but here black is completely crushing with bishop takes g5 believe it or not europe is down but the attack is devastating and i've analyzed this position in detail white is in big trouble white's best move is actually knight h3 now if white takes on g5 this is my main line queen takes g5 that's probably what you will see uh, with human opponents bishop h3 simply e5 this is one way to an advantage you can also play of course knight c6 as a matter of fact black has multiple ways to get an advantage nothing wrong with queen check as well but you probably don't want to you know guide the king towards c2 huge compensation here and the toughest move for black to handle is this knight h3 move now bishop h4 check white sort of makes a run for it with king c2 black has full compensation but it's unclear position instead i'm going to show you a really amazing resource now if you don't know about this move it's going to be quite difficult to find over the board it's bishop h6 x clan simple chess the point being is that after bishop takes we get our queen involved we check check and now simple developing move knight c6 okay white has nothing better than to continue development with for example knight c3 and now the killer move is e5 that is it guys the game is over no matter what white does he's either gonna drop the knight we're gonna take on d4 potentially with check and white is in big trouble so to summarize let's call it the shock gambit the mommy of gambit with d4 knight of six c4 e6 g4 bad move don't take the pawn no need to simply develop with d5 g5 now knight e4 logical chess bishop g2 check king f1 castles this is the novelty you have to know from now on it's white who is on the defensive after f3 f5 and i've analyzed this position in great detail white is in big trouble now besides a3 white can try this move c5 trying to delay taking the piece and also trying to trap our bishop a very clever move so let me go back to this position after c5 in that case we need to create an escape route for our bishop with c6 for example a3 bishop a5 b4 bishop c7 now unlike the previous bishop e7 idea notice he could take the pawn i mean the knight and when we recapture with the pawn the pawn on g5 is not uh, is not lost we can't take it and a lot maybe this is also what he was afraid of but this position is no good for white as well white is clearly worse after the simple chess e5 center is getting destroyed the problem is this bishop is sort of overloaded the bishop wants to come and help out but the g pawn is lost and then this guy is, is weak so if bishop e3 we just take he cannot take with the bishop because queen g5 queen takes d4 now this diagonal is rather weakened we can play either knight d7 or even queen e7 and i don't really see how white has um can recover from this i mean yes he is a piece up but if you look at the position his pieces are horrible absolutely horrible and black has full compensation so don't be afraid of the mommy diarov gambit please go ahead and play active chess don't forget to castle here on move six and of course 
play followed up with f5. I think white has no chance and he'll be lucky to survive to 20 moves here. Thank you guys and see you again.